Oh, hey, you're back for more DB. Well, then let's do as I promised in the last video and look at how to change the UI of NVIM DB. If you don't know what DB is, I suggest you take a look at my previous video, which is just an overview of DB's functionality. If you don't want to do that, then let's just say that DB is a database client which I wrote for NeoVim. If you haven't noticed already, we have the default layout of DB open right in front of us now. It consists of four windows, editor, drawer, call log, and results. And these are all open at once at the same time. And basically it looks like every other database client. Now, I have an idea. I want to have more room for writing queries and for viewing results, but I'd still like to use the drawer and call log view at times. So why not just make the drawer and call log be floating pop-ups? In case you had a hard time imagining how that would look like, now with the power of video editing, I present you the finished product of this video. So here editor is on top, results are at the bottom, and then I have a key map to toggle the drawer and another key map to toggle the call log. So here we are in my new Vim configuration. Let's create a new file where we'll write the layout code. But, 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 but what is a layout in the f form of code, you may ask? Well, that's an excellent question. And let's console the documentation for this. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. Okay, down here. It says that layout is basically just a Lua table with these three required function fields or let's call them methods. So we need an open and close method and then a third method which just tells us if DB is open or not. Okay, let's close this help and let's start building. So let's begin by creating a simple function skeleton. This layout is a table we are gonna use for the layout and we just return it at the end of the file so we can import it in another file. I'll just import these three imports, which we'll need at some point later. So this means the UI, the UI API, then utils from DB and layout tools. Now, do note that technically layout tools and utils aren't really meant to be public. I need to sort this kind of exporting in some other places as well in DB, but for now we don't care. We just accept that we'll cry once some update breaks our config. Or let's just make a deal, me and you, that I'll put a link to my new Vim config down in the description and I'll keep the finished layout up to date. So in case you decide to copy this layout and the code breaks, you can just visit my config repo again and copy it. Let's also put field descriptors here. If you don't know, these are Lua doc strings, which allow your language server to perform type checking for you basically. We'll talk about the meaning of these private fields in a bit. The first thing we need is a constructor function. This syntax with the colon might be alien to you, but that basically just means that the first argument to the function table is the table itself and it co it's called self. So this is basically the same as this. Now let's add the required methods to our layout. And let's start by returning the state from is open first. We'll toggle the state of this flag internally in other methods later. Continuing with the open method, so first we just use the currently open window in NeoVim for the editor. And the first thing we need to do is make it the only one. By the way, this function here is the same as the only command, but uh, it just ignores floating windows. Then we get the window ID of the open window and we add it to the list of all open windows. And finally, open the editor UI in the window using the API. We then perform the split operation, so we get a new window at the bottom and then pretty much do the same as before, except for the result window. I also added this call at the end here to always put the cursor to the editor window on open, just for consistency. Finally, we also need to toggle the is open flag. Next, in the close method, we finally use the list of windows, we just walk through one list and close all the windows. P call here is used to suppress any errors. Everyone, by the way, knows that error handling is for losers. And at the end, we also need to toggle the is open flag. 
but of course the other way around. At this point it would make sense if we could test our layout. So we go to where we have our db setup function, I have it in this file right here, and import the created layout file. We then need to construct our layout and pass it to the setup function. If we now open a new instance of NeoVim, we can try the layout out. So we can see that we have the editor on top and then results at the bottom. Right, back to our layout. We have editor and result, so let's start with our floating windows. First, let's add a new open drawer method. Here we just calculate the dimensions of the window from the NeoVim UI, then we create a throwaway buffer just until we call the drawer API function, we use the NeoVim API to create a floating window. And also for the same reason as before, we need to add the newly created window ID to the internal list of open windows. So now with this floating window open, we can tell the drawer to show itself in it with this function. And then the last thing, which is really just a nice to have, is to add an auto command to the drawer buffer, which closes the pop-up window if we leave it. Also, let's add a key map that if we press escape, we can close it manually. Okay, now we need to test this, but we need to create a key mapping in our DB config first. So in our config, here I created a drawer mapping used for config in the setup function that just opens the drawer pop-up. Then here is a helper function which expands list-like table with this drawer mapping. And then I'll add a call to this function for all our four panels in the config. So the mapping should work from any DB window like this. Now let's save this and let's test it again. In the fresh NeoVim instance, we open DB and let's try the mapping out. And we can see that it works. Hooray! Back to the layout. Now we also need call locked function as a pop-up. So let's first extract the logic of open drawer to a new function, which we'll call open pop-up. The only thing we need to change in this function is to replace the drawer show API call with a generic function, which takes a single window ID argument. And now to re-implement the open drawer function, we can just call the open pop-up and pass in the just removed API function. We can now do the same thing with call log. In our configuration, we can now add an additional mapping for opening the call log and using it in our expand mappings function. Now let's add a few finishing touches to our layout. The first is pretty neat and it's a way to preserve the window layout before opening DB and then restoring it after it's closed. There's a function for that and it's already used by the default layout, so let's just reuse it. Let's save the layout egg before opening and then restore it after closing. Another improvement is to close DB in case a different buffer is open in the window. And another improvement which closes all windows if one is closed with colon Q. Now let's just add these functions to the open method like this. So one final test in a rash NeoVim instance. Now we can see that we have the editor pane and then the results pane and we can toggle the drawer and also call log and we can close it with escape. And also if we open the drawer and we leave it, it also closes. And yeah, that's it. So hopefully you got encouraged to try and write your own layout for DB. If you do, please post it down in the comments or maybe create an issue on GitHub or something and I'll be glad to look at what you come up with. Thanks for watching and see you. Bye!